Hi, I'm Cooper and I'm with Major Pest Control. I'm here today in collaboration with our on-site associate certified entomologist to provide homeowners with some general information about four of the most common nuisance rodents. These include voles, moles, gophers, and ground squirrels. I will also share some preventive advice and reply to some frequently asked questions regarding these similar yet unique types of pesky critters. What are moles and voles? But then what are gophers and ground squirrels? Voles and moles are commonly mistaken for one another. Gophers and ground squirrels fall into this pattern of misidentification as well. Let's go over some characteristics of each animal. A mole is a small mammal ranging from 4.5 to 8 inches long. Moles have gray or brown fur, tiny eyes, and long claws for digging through dirt. They feed on various insects, including grubs and earthworms. Since they don't eat plants, any damage that may be done to plants is accidental and can be blamed on a different pest, a vole. A mole is slightly larger than a vole. It is less common to see a mole above ground. Their small eyes are not able to withstand much sunlight. While moles can be found in eastern Canada and in southern BC, they are relatively non-existent throughout Alberta. In cities like Edmonton and Calgary, voles are a common theme for pest control companies. Voles resemble mice but are rounder in shape and have shorter tails. They have a large pair of front teeth, brown fur, and gray or white belly. Unlike moles, voles are herbivores and eat seeds, stems, roots, and the bulbs of plants. They are active year-round and can be found in insulated tunnels under the snow in the winter. Voles are commonly known as meadow mice. The only visible difference between a vole and a field mouse is that it will have a smaller tail. The most common vole species in Alberta include the water, woodland, prairie, singing, montane, townsends, root, long-tailed, rock, chestnut-cheeked, and creeping vole as well as meadow vole. Now, gophers are larger than both moles and voles. Approximately 31 species of pocket gophers occur in North and Central America, with two species found in Canada. The northern pocket gopher lives in southern Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, and in South Central BC, while the larger Plains pocket gopher barely extends into Canada via the Red River Valley, Manitoba. Pocket gophers have round bodies, small eyes, short ears and tail, and large curved claws on their forefeet for digging. They have short fur which is gray to brown and can lie in any direction. They are named pocket gophers because they carry food or nesting materials in fur-lined external cheek pouches which they empty with their forefeet. The mouth closes behind the gnawing teeth which never in fact stop growing, enabling these rodents to harvest underground vegetation and to excavate networks of tunnels in prairies and mountain meadows without ingesting the soil. Pocket gophers create fan-shaped mounds that are burrow exits, which are usually closed with round earthen plugs. During the mating season and when females are raising their young, they live solitary lives. Each year, one to two litters of two to 11 pups are reared in deep tunnels. Pocket gophers belong to the family Geomidae. Ground squirrels are part of the squirrel family, or Ciuridae. Ground squirrels are small burrowing rodents. There are 26 species in North America, including Richardson's ground squirrel, woodchucks, chipmunks, marmots, and prairie dogs. These small mammals are usually 9 to 11 inches long. 
with bushy tails from five to nine inches long. They can appear brown and or gray with speckled markings alongside their backs. Like gophers, their cheeks are used as pouches to transport food sources such as fruits, nuts, or seeds back to their burrows underground. Ground squirrels can create burrows up to six feet deep and up to 20 feet long with multiple entrances, which can be four inches in diameter on average. These creatures are most active on days that are warm and sunny where they can be seen on the surface foraging for food. In rural areas, they inhabit fields, pastures, and meadows, but they can be found in residential and commercial settings within towns and cities. The Richardson's ground squirrel is the most common ground squirrel in the Edmonton and Calgary region and can be identified by its trembling tail, giving it the nickname Flicker Tail. Now let me cover some signs of possible damages. For moles, inspect your yard for runways, which are long, shallow tunnels on the surface of the lawn. Look for evidence of mounds. Mounds are deeper than runways and form a cone shape on the surface of the grass. Moles will often check the mound for insects. Open holes are rarely a sign of mole activity. With voles, check for tunnels and runways along the surface of the lawn. These may appear similar to human veins, let's say. Voles like to make secluded holes under leaves and plants. Inspect your garden and areas with extra foliage for signs of vole holes. Pay close attention to plants for signs of wilting or turning yellow. This indicates that a vole has been snacking on the roots. Holes with mounds that are crescent or fan-shaped. Plugged holes with fresh dirt, meaning it is still active and burrowing. Sprinkler system that appears chewed on. With ground squirrels, destruction of food-bearing gardens and ornamental plants. Gnawing marks on tree bark or trunk girdling burrowing around tree roots. I will share now some prevention tips for these nuisance rodents. Keep the lawn mowed and tidy. Limit the number of ornamental plantings that provide food and hiding spots. Use copper meshing buried several centimeters in the ground to create a fence around the base of trees and other plantings. Control insects around the yard to eliminate food supplies. Use decorative rocks and posts to combat tunneling. Limit how often you water the lawn. Employ plastic netting to protect planted seeds and seedlings in the garden. Use raised beds in the garden to limit access to garden plants. Remove debris from around the yard and garden. And finally, promote natural predators to control populations such as hawks and owls. Here are some frequently asked questions. Why should I be worried about moles and voles? Though moles can be beneficial by eating grubs, slugs, earthworms, and small snakes, the damage they do far outweighs the benefits. Moles and voles have been known to destroy gardens, parks, lawns, cemeteries, and golf courses. Even though moles do not eat plants, they can still kill them by disrupting the soil around the roots. Mole tunnels provide easy access for voles, and as we have learned, voles eat all the parts of a plant, quickly destroying gardens and lawns. Are moles and voles dangerous? Voles can bite and carry diseases such as rabies and tularemia. Moles and voles also can attract secondary pests to your yard, including mites, lice, fleas, as well as ticks. Especially if you have a cat or a dog that spends time outdoors, the presence of moles and voles increases the chances of bringing parasites into your home. What are the problems with voles? Voles create small holes about one inch across to gain access to tubers and bulbs. 
Voles sometimes use mole tunnels, which wrongly incriminates moles for eating roots rather than the white grubs they actually eat. Vole damage may also be evident on trees and shrubs where voles have gnawed through the bark near the ground. What time of day are voles most active? Voles are active during day and night with peak activity occurring at dawn and dusk. They do not hibernate and are active year round. Their home range is usually a quarter acre or less, but the range extent varies with season, population density, habitat, and food supply. How do I stop voles from tunneling? One method to try is creating a cleared strip around your vegetable garden to discourage movement. You can also protect some of your plants and trees using hardware cloth or by creating makeshift collars from materials such as open-ended plastic jugs or milk cartons, which are then buried an inch or two into the ground to keep them from tunneling inward. What attracts voles? Voles prefer to inhabit areas with ample vegetation for food and cover. Rather than providing their preferred habitat in your yard, take measures to remove these items to encourage them to leave. Mow your lawn and pull weeds regularly. Remove ground cover like brush and low-lying bushes and shrubs. What is the best way to control pocket gophers? Pocket gophers can cause damage to your lawn and garden. Homeowners can control them by eliminating their food source, spraying with liquid repellents, or most effectively, by calling a trusted pest control company to bait, trap, and remove them. Now, what time of day are pocket gophers the most active? Pocket gophers are active year round and may burrow at any time of day. However, most gophers activity take place in the spring when they construct up to three mounds a day. They are most active around dusk and at night. How many pocket gophers are in a colony? Pocket gophers generally prefer to live alone except when they have offspring. However, populations can also be as dense as 60 per acre when food is plentiful. Are ground squirrels the same as tree squirrels? The common squirrel, also known as a tree squirrel, will have a longer, bushier tail than a ground squirrel. A tree squirrel will also bear no stripes, whereas a ground squirrel will show stripes on its body, such as a chipmunk. Are ground squirrels harmful? They will not bite humans unless provoked. They do, however, carry health risks like fleas, which can transmit disease such as bubonic plague. With regard to homes and buildings, they have been known to cause structural damage under foundations, patios, and stairs, which can be expensive to repair. Once moles or voles have staked their claim on your property, it can be challenging to convince them to go elsewhere. Not to mention, voles are elusive, making it impossible to tell how many of the little critters are contributing to the problem. Other burrowing rodents, such as ground squirrels and gophers, can cause unsightly and potentially costly damages to the exteriors of properties. A pest control expert can help make your yard an undesirable habitat, restoring the beauty of your flowers, plants, and lawn so you can enjoy it once again.